you. Senator Hodge, you recognized. Thank you, Mr. Lieutenant Governor. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, Nebraskans. First, I have to give some genuine respect to Senator Merman and Senator Groney, who have not given up the fight to allow teachers to put their hands on students for the last four and five years um, with immunity to, to uh, restrain these kids. That's no joke to me. I see the dedication. I see them retooling the original bill in every which way to hang it on any education bill possible so we can continue the debate over a bill that's been killed over and over and over. And I see that determination and it's like, okay, game recognized game. I've got issues like that too. We're like a dog with a bone. And if this is the hill that they wanna die on, okay, I see that and we can die on that hill then because this underlying bill is not going to pass if we're gonna hang the child restraint bill on it. Senator Merman and Senator Groney and others have hung their student restraint bill, which is like a zombie that keeps getting killed and keeps coming back to life over and over and over again. Now as AM 990 and AM 1422, and there is no scenario where I will support a bill with a student restraint bill attached to it. As long as that bill is getting hung on things, that bill is going to go the distance. And I'm willing to kill the lottery funding bill to prevent the student restraint bill from being adopted. I'm also not happy with what just happened with Senator Vargas's meatpacking plant bill. It is so disingenuous to get up on the microphone on the official record of the Nebraska legislature and say that a motion to recommit a bill to committee is a friendly amendment. First of all, it's not an amendment, it's a motion, so you should know what you're talking about. And second of all, the intention of that entire um, strategy, which was Senator Slama's amendments, uh, designed to take out the provisions of the compromise that Senator Vargas had already made with meatpacking plants, with stakeholders, with people affected who were workers, to take all of those things out of the bill that had come through compromise and continue to debate the underlying bill instead of the amendment that everybody had come to an agreement with. So that was really disingenuous. And then it's disingenuous to throw all those amendments on there and then put a motion on to recommit to committee and say it's friendly and that you're trying to improve the bill. I couldn't believe my ears when Senator Lowe said to Senator Vargas, if you care at all about these workers, you'll recommit it to committee so we can continue working on it. Like he hasn't been working on it for over a year. Like many, many, many of us haven't been working on it for over a year. All of you had the opportunity to come to listening sessions with meatpacking plant workers, but instead you're taking your cues from the people out in the lobby who get paid six figures to defend the income and the revenue of these multinational corporations that have plants in Nebraska. And you read these things on the mic, and I know you're reading things that were handed to you because I can literally see on the floor what you're reading with my eyes. And now that bill is back in committee, but we all know that that bill's dead because it doesn't have the support to come back out. And I. I'm not one to criticize procedural shenanigans. I'm seriously not. I don't, I don't care if you want to put a thousand amendments on something. I don't, want to care if, I don't care if you want to make every motion because I do the same thing. And I think that's the game, game recognized game. When you follow the rules, you can do things according to the rules and you know, success is doing what's available for you to do. And those are motions and procedures that are available for you to do. But don't get up on the mic and then act like you're doing anything except hurting workers that you're doing anything except standing up for the big multinational corporations who are, I'll say it, uh, many proponents of that bill wouldn't say it, but who are abusing their workers and who are treating essential workers as disposable workers, all to protect their bottom line. That's something that needed to be said on the mic. So just get up on the mic and say that that's what you're doing. Say, I wanna kill the bill. Don't say, this is friendly and I'm trying to improve it. That's a lie. So don't be out here lying, just say what you mean. I'll say what I mean. I will kill LB 529 if that hit the kids amendment is put on it. Thank you, Mr. Lieutenant Governor. I was listening intently to Senator Matt Hansen's comments and I think he touched on a lot of points that 
echo the same way that I feel and he just he just put it so much better than I could put it um, the bottom line is this colleagues the law already allows everybody to act reasonably without a penalty period if a teacher has to use reasonable force if they have to do something that's that's within common sense and reason to defend themselves in a classroom that's already okay according to the law anything beyond that which is what the upcoming amendment would allow that we're trying not to get to is a license to act unreasonably and with impunity and with protection from the state for people who could potentially abuse children and if people want to codify that then no problem but that's not what what the amendment says or does we've got to be honest about that teachers already have the right to defend themselves reasonably the amendment that Senator Merman has introduced that we're, that we're trying not to get to, which is why we have to take time, is basically just a word reshuffled version of um, the general file amendment, AM 719, which was ruled by the speaker to be substantially similar to a portion of a separate bill, LB 673. LB 673 was killed by the Education Committee. That bill was not designated as a priority bill, not by Senator Merman, not by Senator Groney, not by the committee, not by the speaker. So why should this non-priority bill even be considered? If it's not important enough for a priority, then why should this controversial bill continue to be brought back to life and resurrected over and over again in different forms as different amendments? Because people are so dogged and insistent on giving teachers the right to put their hands on children, to restrain kids. And I share the concerns that Senator Chambers, Chambers shared in previous years, that Senator Matt Hansen has articulated, that Senator Michaela Kavanaugh has articulated, Senator Terrell McKinney, about how this really does get us rolling down the hill toward corporal punishment. And there's no reason to think that that's not the same thing. This amendment is basically an identical version of a bill that was introduced and debated last session, LB 147, by Senator Groney. And those of you who were here then, you remember the hours and hours and hours of contested debate on this subject, from the bill coming to the floor, going through rounds of debate, the poll motion, the motions to reconsider, and now putting it on every education bill that we can remotely find related to it. You know, I don't want to take the time on this. I've got other things to do. I'm freezing in here and I want to go outside because I hear it's really nice outside and we go so many days in here on, uh, often without even being able to go outside. But as long as this bill to hit the kids, to restrain the kids, keeps going on to other vehicles like LB 529, we've got to stay in here and make sure that doesn't happen because I couldn't live with myself if I had to go back to my district and look at those kids and say I didn't do everything I could to stop that bill year after year now this is going on the third year I have done everything I can to stop that and this year is no different colleagues teachers do not want to be put in the position to have to physically restrain students even students with the most severe mental and behavioral challenges, they want to learn. They don't want to be a disruption. They want to feel safe and supported. And in today's world, there are so many elements of poverty, of trauma, and many things that prevent children from coming to school ready to learn, ready to participate productively. One minute. That's why as a society, as lawmakers, as people here in the legislature, the responsibility lies with us and it lies with the executive and judiciary branches and how we make policy for our state agencies and how we handle issues of justice. These issues of violence and disruption weigh on kids. They weigh on parents and they weigh on teachers. But if we pass the amendment that's coming up from Senator Merman, we will be reinforcing a culture of resorting to violence, resorting to aggression, instead of a culture of education and training centered around the value of each child. Thank you, Mr. Lieutenant Governor.